Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Thursday, July 20th, 2017. My name is Rich, and joining me to cover the AW9 Denver qualifiers is Bijan. How you make it out? Good, man. I'm in Comic-Con mode, ready to go. Comic-Con's this week. I hope, you know, um, if you're in San Diego area and going to Comic-Con, everybody, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. Love to meet you. Yeah, and I hate you all. Anybody that's in San Diego and able to get to that... (laughs) That is uh, like Mecca for nerds everywhere. So it's it's great that you're going to get to go. I'm totally jealous. I can't wait to see the pictures. Oh, it's going to be fun times, man. Fun, fun times. So in this episode, we're going to be covering uh, AW9 Denver qualifiers, but we're also going to talk a little bit about National Ninja League, which is kicking off again. Uh, we'll do a quick update on Spartan Ultimate Team Warrior Ninja Challenge, whatever the heck it's called. And uh, the UNAA Finals is actually coming up as well. So we'll have a little info on that. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And crashing the course is not in there. Like, what's going on, Rich? Uh, we need to hit up Nikki at ANW Nation or something because I believe this is two weeks in a row we haven't gotten a crashing the course online. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> crashing the course has just disappeared. So there's uh, kind of a big gaping hole in our hearts. Nikki, you need to let I, us know what's going on. I kind of have on. a theory. I kind of have a theory. I have. N- this is completely unfounded, guys. So please don't take this to heart or anything. I don't have any info. But maybe they weren't able to bring Alex Weber out there to the filming locations in the later parts of the season. So maybe we'll get him back for crashing the course next week since we're going back to L.A. That's my theory. Good theory. We'll see if it holds up. Uh, but if we look at the course for Denver, this was a overall a, a bizarre course, a tough course, probably the toughest we've seen. Ooh, they said it broke the record for the uh, for the least uh, finalists, right? <laughs> Only eight people managed to finish it. I would say that's pretty tough for a qualifier. Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy because when they previewed it, it looked hard, but it didn't look like insanely hard, right? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, like, is this thing harder than it looks? Because, well, once we saw the rail runner, I realized that that obstacle is nuts. But, yeah, it, it really didn't seem as hard as it ended up being. Yeah, the rail runner is deceptive because when I first saw that particular obstacle, I thought it was cool. It was one of those obstacles where visually it looks interesting, but maybe it not, might not be as hard. Because I just look at it, I'm like, oh, well, you just slide up and, you know, you keep lashing and, you know, you'll get through it. Boy, was I wrong. That thing, we'll break, I'll break it down in a bit, guys, but there's a lot of complexity to that obstacle, even more than what probably most of you have seen. And I, I really like that thing, and I think they, they have a winner there. They can do some things with it. I can see some future modifications, and I, I think that's going to be one of those um, hallmarks. Yeah, it's got a lot of neat things about it. I liked it. I think it was a good obstacle. We actually had a couple of new ones here. Uh, the Bouncing Spider was kind of a variation on one we saw in Philly last year. Uh, I like this better. I like this. I thought this was a much better obstacle. It was interesting, dynamic. It kind of flowed better than the one last year, I think. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a mix between Jumping Spider and... I, f- I forget the name of the obstacle, Rich, but the one with the two, like, punching bags that you had yeah, to grab exactly. onto. Yeah, yeah, it kind of reminds... It's, it's kind of a mix of that. And... I, I'm kind of indifferent about it, honestly. It, it took out a bunch of the of the competitors, so I like that fact that it's got some difficulty. Visually, it's whatever, but yeah, it, it th- just I guess when you're when you have a new obstacle that's on the same episode as the Rail Runner, one of those are going to get <laughs> overshadowed. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, Bouncing Spider, it wasn't agreed. Like it was, uh, I'd say it's like middle level for me. Yep. Yeah, me too. But overall, I liked it was a good course. I thought it was a very, obviously a very tough course. Yeah, it was a great course. I mean, we got this ring swing and everything, man. It's it's pretty cool. It tested a lot of skills. It wasn't really focusing so much on one particular thing. You really had to be an all-around good athlete, good ninja, really, athlete, because it tested all the ninja skills one after the other. Yeah, you, you have to be a jack-of-all-trades on this one. So. <laughs> uh, so taking a look at the competitors first on the course we had sierra Suter, part of the Suter seven i hope i'm saying that right uh and they the whole family the biggest family we've ever had take the course uh cute little segment i thought it was it showed a lot of uh energy i, I like the family i thought it seemed pretty cool 
it was really interesting that they let so many people from the same family try it out, but you knew they wouldn't all be the best, right? So it was like, eh, I, don't, I don't know about picking them just for the coolness of having so many people from one family run, but um, right off the bat, Sierra was pretty good. She struggled on the steps, but she didn't make it through. Um, she went out on the ring swing, which we saw a lot of the suitors do. <laughs> You're just over... Dude, I this is... <laughs> It's cute. It's cute and all, but I think this is going to be our first and probably last time we're going to see all the suitors run this course because they're taking up seven spots, and those are seven spots that we could have had other Ninja Warriors compete. I mean, I, I get asked all the time why I'm not, you know, if I'm competing or trying out like this year on American Ninja Warrior or something. And it's like, if I want to, if I'm going to be on the show, I really want to know at least what I'm doing because I don't want to take up the spot of somebody that, you know, deserves, you know, that's worked so hard to get it. And I don't want to go too deep into that, but it's seven spots. That's all I'm going to say. And this was a very fun segment. Like, it was kind of like Brady Bunch, you know, and it was cool. And I was like, this is adorable. But I really hope at least we get, like, maybe two or three people getting pretty far into it. And. It, 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 I had a pause because they're talking about oh they're working out and everything together but we are not seeing a whole lot of ninja warrior training <laughs> and sure enough um, their technique was all over the place on those rings I mean their arms are fully extended I'm talking I'm just gonna cover all of them right like ex- all yeah. of them except the that one last guy it's like their arms are fully extended down while on the ring and trying to like jump up and I'm like well you have to like you have to visually like see what you're doing wrong and it's one thing for the first person to fail but then we have like five other (laughs) members of the family doing the same exact thing and it's like what are what are you doing (laughs) and i i think it's it was cute i think it was kind of a failed experiment and i don't think we needed so much time devoted to them because we don't just get her but we got like so much more runs of them and also the brother complete like going far and I did any of them make it to the to the finals? Did the did the last brother make it to the finals? I'm not positive. I th- think he might have. I really think he did. He did make it to the the obstacle, the cutoff point. You made it to the rail rail runner thing. Yeah, he did. He made okay. it to the rail runner. So 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 maybe. at least maybe there was a payoff there. Hopefully, <laughs> you guys. Yeah, but- I think it would have been better to have. I agree with you completely that it was too mu- too many spots for them to take up i know nothing against family i think it's great that they're all doing it and everything but yeah they have energy and charisma i mean it's nothing yeah. against them it's just i think the, i think they spots. could have had their strongest they they even said he was the strongest and maybe that was after the fact but you know what if he's well, the athlete like he of the bunch the, he, he seemed like the major fan dude like, yeah he's the one to get up like, there representing the family hey we all train together and everything he's gonna run for the family we're hoping he makes it fire, blah, blah, blah. That wouldn't have taken anything away. You didn't have to have everybody out there failing on the ring obstacle. I think one other one made it a little further. But, yeah, overall, it was just too many spots. Too many spots. And, yeah, I <laughs> for me, it was just, like, just my mind being blown of the fact that, like, they're not learning from each other's mistakes. Right. And it's like, why are you fully sent... I, I don't know, guys. It, it's pretty obvious what you, what's going on wrong with the, with the ring swing and just they're they're not learning from each other so that was kind of whatever to me it, it was fine because it's the first time they're doing it but i don't think we're going to see them again i think we'll see i think it's a very good chance we'll be seeing the brother again uh, we'll, oh yeah, we'll yeah. Talk sorry about him i later. meant like i meant all of them yeah yeah all of them they yeah. won't be i don't think as a group they'll be going again in mm-hmm. my opinion but yeah it was interesting uh next up we had robbie doman uh former army staff sergeant uh, who injured his leg? He's six foot four, very very tall to be joining the course. Really tall, dude. <laughs> I was worried about him on that on that uh, jumping spider part because you know people with long legs that that is not easy to do, especially when you have a leg injury and you've got your leg in kind of a brace. Yeah. Um, but he beat the bouncing spider. I really didn't see that. I thought he was going to demonstrate how tough the bouncing spider was, but he made it through there. Um, and ended up going out on the paddle boards. His knee buckled on the third step. But it, overall, it was a really good run. I was really impressed. Yeah, that was really cool. And, you know, all the props to him. I mean, that's a major injury that you got to come back from. And, like, going on a show like American Ninja Warrior, which is so heavy, and especially this course, if you th- really think about it with the trampolines and everything, 
I mean, it's going to put a lot of toll on your knees. And uh, props to this guy for not only competing on the course, but excelling at it with all the odds against him. I mean, that was really cool. And, you know, Army veteran and everything. I mean, major props to him. Like, he's representing a certain demographic that just doesn't get enough love on really television. And, yeah, I, I appreciate that a whole lot. Good for that guy. Yeah, it was a nice little throwback to the military episode we had a couple seasons ago, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, we had Nate DeHaan, uh, Bush pilot slash dog musher. A strange combination of jobs. This guy trained with Nick Hansen because he had the closest ninja gym. I really like that. <laughs> that was cute. And also, he's Nick Hansen's best friend, dude. Like, Poor Grant McCartney is, like, crying in in the corner somewhere (laughs) in Hawaii. I don't think he's best friends. That's what they said, man. They said, like, Nick Hanselin and him, like, uh, quickly became best friends. Oh. I don't know. I was like, I was like, no, Grant McCartney and the bromance. What up? (laughs) Nick Hanselin's getting a lot of love this season. That's great. Yeah, Nick Hanselin's kind of like the uh, new Beast McGrath of, like, the... Yeah, every like the the second best friend you know of everybody yeah he gets lots of he gets lots of showtime in the uh pieces ahead of time but it's not actually for him it's for everybody else yeah i thought he was done on the bouncing spider uh he hung on that forever but he got through after transferring mm-hmm. to the smaller pipe i don't know how he held on that long a lot of heart man i was worried about him though he drained a lot of energy on that thing that guy has no quit like you said a lot of heart oh my god after that i was like well he's done like he wasted so much energy on that uh he got on the rail runner and he hung on there for so long for someone that had hung up on those pipes that long like how did he get that much strength and endurance to hang on he didn't make it through but oh my like no wonder they featured him the guy's crazy yeah it was it was good stuff and i i think we've got really fun like pairing here with this guy and Nick Hansen and they're just so fun and there are like these crazy out there guys in the middle living in the middle of nowhere in Alaska and I don't know I I think they're they, they kind of represent just like the the guys that live in the middle of nowhere and just like do their own thing and but also have like a lot of personality and that's really cool to see it's it's hard to get people like that that actually are good at obstacles because obviously they won't be able to train as often. So, I don't know. I think we have a really cool dynamic pairing on our hands. Yeah, we have to keep an eye out for this guy, Nate Dahan. Fun guy. Yeah. Yeah, really cool guy. Next up, speaking of cool guys, we had John Stewart take the course next. Yes! <laughs> John Stewart's amazing and this episode was actually full of amazing ninjas that we've heard of lots of times. Lots of veterans, but lots of injuries. Did you notice that? Like a common theme? You know, I didn't until you just said that. that, that yeah, that is a prevalent thing on this episode. But it, it definitely struck me that we this episode was stock-loaded with a lot of the more well-known ninjas. Especially in the preview. I'm like, whoa. Like, it's not like... I, I think it was like two episodes ago we were like there's no ninjas on this episode like, it's like the, brandon mirrors is your big draw for this one this is not a no it's like lance picus was like the guy ending the episode and no pro, like all the love in the world to lance picus but i was like where's all the other ninjas so this was cool because it was definitely sock loaded with a lot of them and a lot of people on my uh fantasy league as well yeah. and it was it was cool to see it was refreshing and yeah back to john stewart though First of all, the hair, like, I was like, whoa, this guy's, like, straight up namaste status and stuff, and then goes right into a video of him traveling the world, and I'm like, makes sense, makes sense completely. Like, props on this guy, he is living the life. If When I'm his age, oh, man, I wish I can do half the things this guy's done. But he's been dealing with tendonitis, they made a point of uh, pointing out. So he traveled all the way back, he's been traveling the world with his wife and son, I believe it was, and he flew back just to compete. Um, but he ended up going out on the bouncing spider, grabbing for the smaller pipe, and uh, yeah, that sucked. I kind of wanted to see how far he could go this year. Yeah, it, w- it was kind of unfortunate by the fact that we're not going to see him more this year. But I-, I can't, I can't hate on it too much because I know the guy's living his life and having a good time right now. So all the best to John Stewart. I think we're going to see a whole lot more of him back next year when he's a little bit more focused on his training again like right now he's on vacation mode living his life and 
A&W is kind of on the back burner. I think next year he'll be, you know, putting priorities back on A&W and we'll see a much more focused uh, John Stewart. Yeah. Next up on the course was an, the other member, one of the other members of the Suter 7, Ryan Suter, who it turns out suffers from hyperhidrosis, like sweaty palms, which is like, I can't imagine too many things worse for the ninja course than having sweaty palms. Um, he made it further than the others. It seemed clear he was going to because they were featuring him. They did like a big segue with all the other ones. So I kind of knew he was going to make it further in the course. He had a few stumbles, but he was pretty good. He made it to the transition on the rail runner, which seemed to take out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that transition looked amazingly tough. And that was our first view of it. Yeah. Should I break it down now or should we wait till later? Oh, break her down. All right, man. So for everybody that wants to know kind of what the deal is with the with the rail runner and kind of the complexities of it, because when you look at it, especially with the first few r competitors trying it, it very much looks like an upper body obstacle where you're just hanging and you guys got to shimmy, 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 right? Not really that easy. It's much more of an all around body obstacle where the first component is obviously your upper body where you got to do short powerful thrusts upwards like lachets upwards but the main thing is that you have to be controlled if you just swing wildly and hard what's going to happen is that you're gonna your body's going to swing backwards and you're going to backpedal and swing back um back down on the railing so short burst controlled right now there's the core component of it where you have to hold your body your lower body upwards and straight and basically like still that way you don't have a back kick when you're when you're swinging if you look at the first two competitors that tried this this particular obstacle their folly while while trying to go on it is they'd swing upwards and then they wouldn't control their their core and their lower body they would just be swinging up and all of a sudden their body kicks back and the, they start flying backwards and that's the wrong way you want to do it. So you have to completely contract your core, kind of like squeezing your gut, doing a sit-up. Or if you're going number two, I'll just leave it at that, you know, <laughs> squeeze that stomach. And <laughs> and then the last part is that you have to control your legs, kind of like lifting up your knees. And uh, basically the best way to imagine this, this obstacle, if you are training for it, is you have to do not only a knee up, it, where you know you're hanging from your arms and you lift your knees up to your chest but also a pull up at the same time so you're holding your 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 lower body up in a contracted position holding it steady and basically uh, with a forward momentum and having short controlled bursts of laches up that 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 panel and that's how you do it so it's a much more core bo lower body workout than you might imagine looking at it but a lot of hidden complexities to it. That's the way to get through it. And then, boy, oh, boy, that transition, as you were alluded to, Rich, that was the crazy part because I didn't really notice it until, like, three or four runs in. But that <laughs> the grips are completely different where you go downward so you have a downward force and no, no longer are you in a pull-up position where you're holding on to it. Uh, with your arms forward and you can have a full grip now you have to grab sideways and with that downward momentum it's super easy for you to just slip off that thing man is that tricky and that must kill your forearms like so much so then you have a completely different route that you have to take with this particular obstacle and it looked like the second portion of it was a lot more tricky where you can like slide off the hinge off on the side a lot more easier so a lot of hidden little things with to it. I really love how they switch things up. And I can see them do, switching the grips up a whole lot more in future seasons. I think there's a lot of room for modifications with this obstacle. I love it, dude. <laughs> Put a couple of cannonballs on there or something for them to grip onto, yeah. Ah, uh, brutal. I can see that. <laughs> for those that, that didn't follow that last part, so basically, as Bajan said, I didn't notice it quite at first either. But the the it's like handlebars at first, right? Like handlebars on a bike as they kept alluding to but the second set of bars go straight up and down they don't go at an angle so it would be a whole different muscle set a whole different it would just be completely different to try to grab onto and try to move yeah really smart i i love this obstacle uh yeah so anyway next on the course we actually had tammy mcclure who has a winery she looked really strong i was really impressed i thought she was great uh she got huge air on the ring swing 
launched herself halfway into the next obstacle practically. Mm-hmm. She was the first woman we could see on the rail runner, uh, but she couldn't make it up the ascent. But uh, yeah, she's man, she's she's ripped. She looks so strong. She's so good, and you know, I don't think they highlighted enough of just how athletic she is. Like they went over her accolades, and it was pretty crazy. I didn't write it down, but. This, this girl is not just a winery, like a vin- yeah. vineyard person. Like she, she's pretty freaking athletic. She's done a lot in her life, and she she does like at her winery like yoga classes and different things. So this girl definitely is very comfortable and controlling with her body, and you could tell she was very poised with a lot of the obstacles and everything. I was really really impressed with her, and she dude she's living the life like <laughs> running a winery, <laughs> chilling. And being an American Ninja Warrior and all around like top level athlete, like good on her, man. Yeah, she was great, and we will get to see her in the finals because she did make the top five for the women. So I believe she made it oh, like number two, top man. I think she made top thirty. Come to think of it, yeah, she was one yeah, of the yeah. three that three, made top thirty. Three women made top thirty. I mean, props to everybody. Like these women are beast moding. Love it. All right, next on the course we had Andrew Duncan. A super fan whose mom is way too excited for this course. So extra. <laughs> you know, the, the previews like had me terrified. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I was getting the bell ready, man. I was like, where's the bell? Oh, it was bad. But I, I have to say, the video wasn't as annoying as I thought it would be. How what was your reaction to it, man? Pretty much the same as yours. I'm glad to hear that. I thought I was just being a jerk because I thought, oh, geez, this is going to be too much. But on the sideline, she was fine. She was just the right level of, like, super amped up and everything. That was that was great. Yeah, she kind of reminds, like, if I was ever on the show, my mom would be like her, you know, super excited. But she wasn't over the top. She knew her role in the video. And I think it was more of, like, a cute thing that, th- that they probably made for, like, yeah. uh, you know, a highlight video being like, look at my mom. She's crazy. Because you can tell she was trying way too hard that video and that's where i was like oh geez but at least she was cool where she wasn't like i'm not gonna make a fool of myself and be so extra during the tapings she was i'm here for my son and i'm so excited and it was like a genuine excitement it wasn't fake so i appreciate it well to a degree it wasn't fake it was still a little amped up but it wasn't it wasn't egregious to me i thought she was just fine and you know, I I like the fact that they highlighted enough, at least, of her of her son, so much so that I just remember Duncan's in his name. That's about it. But <laughs> but um, I'm really happy for this guy because he is a super fan, and you can see it. You can see just how much this means to him. And yeah, I was I was very happy for him. And hey, if it requires you know your mom going crazy on the show to be part of it, you know, all for them. And you could see how happy she her, she was genuinely in the video, like afterwards, like when they're in the, sorry in the interview afterwards, like she was she was a very proud mom, and I, I was happy for them. So I I can't I can't hate it too much, man. I was a little confused at first because watching him on the course, he did not look comfortable at all. He looked nervous. That's he all. Looked he looked nervous so as heck. <laughs> crazy nervous, right? Like, uh, rightfully so. I'd be nervous as heck, too. But yeah. I thought, and he doesn't seem very comfortable. I thought, he's not going to make it through. Why are they featuring him so prevalent? Like, what happens on this run that he makes it, that he got this much <laughs> attention? But he beat it. Like, props to him. He be- he He had the nerves, but he pushed through. I think that's amazing that he was able to do that. He made that transition that was so difficult, made the dismount from pretty far back. He didn't actually go to the top of the rail runner, um, but he beat it and his mom just lost it. And it was a very cute inter- interview afterwards too. So yeah, props to him. Yeah, it was cute. And and good, good uh, calling out the, the nervousness because that definitely stood out to me too. And in many ways, it just made the, the run all that more engrossing because you could tell this isn't a guy that's like just overconfident and cocky and just gonna fly through it it's like this is guy's super nervous and it means a lot to him so it even made it more by the fact that he completed the course it was cool yeah and then after that we had the rock we had brian arnold yes this is the most amazing one of the most amazing athletes on this show who we gotta talk about that video first man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was so awesome i like i must say they had the funniest damn video oh it was so good <laughs> Like just describing the the wedding and just like everything going wrong and the point where, <laughs> what was it? He proposed and all of a sudden there's gunshots and like there's geese falling out of the sky or something like that. 
talk about like nightmare scenario. <laughs> yeah, he proposed to his wife at a nature preserve, and they and then people were hunting ducks. So immediately afterwards, there was gunshots and dead ducks falling from the sky. <laughs> it's, oh, that, that was after he had worst. slept in. He had all these big plans to take her up on this mountain and watch the sunrise. And uh, yeah, yeah, I feel for you, Brian. That sucks, man. But I was happy, you know. Whatever she said, yes, you know, and they had a good time. And it, I always say. The only time it's a bad situation is if you can't make a story out of it. And they, they made a funny story out of it, fun memory. So all props to him. Very happy for you guys. And, dude, he even though he fell, which sucks, like, it wasn't something egregious where it's like he made a physical mistake. It was just, like, things happen sometimes. And, like, you, when you see the, the highlight and see how hard he banged his nose oh. into that railing, that was scary. I thought he had a broken nose, man. Yeah, luckily it hurt. And I was panicked because I thought he wasn't going to make the top 30 at that point, but I didn't realize how Imagine tough how panicked the course I was going to be. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> that does that was actually a perfect combination because it hurts your A&W fantasy score without taking Brian out of the running. I like that. That's a good that's a good run a combination for me. Yeah, it's whatever. It's the it's the first <laughs> runs. And honestly, I'm 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 just happy that he's moving on to yeah. the the finals because at the end of the day, it's all fun with the fantasy and everything. But th- these are people that train all year round, and it would really suck. And we'll talk about it later. But it really really sucks a whole lot when you know how like much they put into training, and then they fall in the very first qualifier. I mean, it really is hard for like just to see the heartbreak. So I'm I'm happy you moved on. I had trouble enjoying this episode after that fall until about the three quarter point, and I realized that Brian had a fast enough time that he was going to be okay. Because I was like, I'm not going to be able to gloat. There's going to be nothing I can say. Like this just sucks. Like how? Like I definitely didn't want Brian to not make it to the finals. So it was like this weird. Like I was torn inside. I was fairly confident he was making it through. He was, he was like ranked number three for a good majority of the episode. I didn't think there was a chance in heck that he wasn't going through. So I wasn't too worried. Yeah, it seemed pretty good at that point. Once I, once I saw him in third place, I was like, okay, I think we're probably okay. Um, But yeah, that looked painful. I'm glad he didn't break his nose because that would have you guys have to remember they they filmed those the final qualifiers the next day with a broken nose he's gonna have bad times <laughs> so i'm it looked it like there was no blood or anything so it was just a freak accident i'm glad he was okay yeah next up on the course though we had ryan sutter half of the trista ryan couple from the bachelorette years ago uh who i haven't thought of in years it's kind of funny to have them kind of show up out of nowhere um what did did that bring a bell to you at all just out of curiosity like did you know who that was no i mean i <laughs> it didn't mean <laughs> when did the bachelor start when i was like in middle school or something like i didn't i don't know who these people are but <laughs> okay i was i wasn't know, sure if i was like reading too much into it. I was a lot like it most of the demographic for the show is gonna have no idea who these two are yeah i i have a good i have a good feeling <laughs> hardly anybody does but you know it, it sounds like they were celebrities during their time like at the <laughs> at the forefront of like the reality show it's, thingy i don't know it was just funny to me but it was like hey as a reminder these are celebrities like if you have to tell people they're celebrities they're really not anymore touche that's a good, very good point actually <laughs> yeah you got me yeah it's like if if you have to explain it it's not it's not a thing yeah I'm, I'm happy for them though they seem like a like a sweet couple and it sounds like even though they're on a like a big show you know a lot of these reality show stars they kind of get full of themselves big-headed and you know they're like oh don't you know who i am blah 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 it seems like they relatively like got out of the the, the spotlight and actually like focused on themselves, fell in love, and like just lived relatively like easygoing lives out of the spotlight. So all the props to them for that. I don't think we needed so long of a video highlighting them. I feel like sometimes American Ninja Warrior gets way too happy with celebs or race car drivers or, or and, and all that stuff. <laughs> like they nice. they put a little too much emphasis on that, but. I was happy about the fact that at least he's kind of trying. Like, you see him training. It it really wasn't American Ninja Warrior. It was more of rock climbing. <laughs> I don't know where. Like, it, have you noticed, Rich, sometimes, they, like, when it's a bigger name, they're like, oh, yeah, I train American Ninja Warrior, and all you see them doing is rock climbing? It's like, no, you're, you're, you're just training your grip and your arms. That's not American Ninja Warrior. But 
you know, he gave it a try and he actually didn't like he, he wasn't one of those celebs where he feels like immediately. So I, I was cool with him. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. But no, it was good to see he he put a, a good effort in. I don't know. I, I thought it was pretty obvious where he was going to fall. I don't know why, because I didn't think that of a lot of other ones. But I just as soon as he took the course, almost I was like, once I saw he was pretty solid, I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure he's going to fall on the trampoline on the bouncing spider. And that's exactly where he did go out. Yeah, well, I think the the, the key to that is when you for a lot of these competitors that failed on it, particularly, they just train upper body. They're like, hey, I'm going to be this jack dude, get in shape. I'm going to do a lot of upper body stuff because that's American Ninja Warrior, train my train my grip and rock climbing and stuff like that. And they don't focus on the lower body or the gymnastics portions or free running portions or any of that kind of stuff. And then you implement a big drop and a trampoline. Guess what? <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to have a bad time. And I think that tripped up a lot of people, which once again is why I very much appreciate that. Because guess what? American Ninja Warrior is just not for rock climbers. Yep. Yeah, I think that's goes back to what we said about it being like a good all-around test of ninja skills i think it was actually a pretty good course yeah uh next up we had a couple of notable fast forwards including noah kaufman the heartbreak of the episode Ugh. went out on the bouncing spider yeah that sucks man i, I i'm i'm happy at least Noah kaufman was back this season yeah because he was sorely missed last season and it's always nice to see him i i like the fact also they could have easily skipped him and they didn't they showed him love i like that yeah, I appreciate that much. At least we did get to see what happened um, to him. And then kind of salt in the wound, Matt Wilder, right after him. We could see. That sucked. Ugh, Come on, like, y'all. You you knew, like, everybody going into this was so excited for Matt Wilder. Like, he was just, like, MVP hero of Team Ninja Warrior this season. And, man, we're not even going to see him, like, compete more in this season of American Ninja Warrior. This guy has so much potential. That sucks. Out on the paddle boards, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. There was, a, I mean, there's the Wolfpack's a pretty big bunch because right after that we get to see Dan Yeager, which was nice to see him get some love because I feel like he gets skipped a lot of times. Yeah, when you think Wolfpack, um, Dan Yeager, I think maybe because he's not on like the pictures, like traditionally it's the four right. main peeps. Yeah. But this guy is also like a hallmark with Matt Wilder in that in that troop, and he's very, very, very talented. So I'm I'm happy they showed him love, and actually had a really cool story. Like his video was really cool. Get to ma- meet his biological father. I appreciate. Just a side note that when referring to his family and everything they kept saying biological father um separating the divide between you know actual race and father and biological father i don't think enough people understand how important that is to certain people that have been you know adopted and yeah just small thing i appreciate that um and yeah cool story i appreciate everything about it and good for him yeah i had forgotten it was him i remembered the story but i hadn't linked it to him in a couple of years so um, I remember the whole thing with him being adopted early, when he was young and, the, and that whole scene that they sh- re-showed, but his fame from a was enough for his father to, to locate him and everything. That's great. So a and cool. kind of brought them back together. Um, yeah, and actually, now that you think about it, there was a few callbacks. Like, this was the episode where we're getting kind of like you know like catching up on people's stories from past seasons yeah and i really like that implement that implementation with the show because in many ways we're seeing different portions of their lives like brian arnold we knew about him and his girlfriend you know they moved in last year he built this crazy thing in their house now they're he proposed or next season we're probably going to get highlights of the wedding you know we're on a journey with these competitors and that's really cool to see yeah, he almost went out on the bouncing spider, though. It was really close. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ended up beating the whole course. It was nice. It was really cool. Yeah, props to you, Dan Yeager. Does not get the, the props he deserves sometimes, and I'm really glad he got some screen time. And I was surprised at who we saw next on the course. Sam Sand. I love Sam Sand. And we, I feel like sometimes Sam gets a lot of uh, a lot of slack for the, some of the, uh, the efforts he's made, but he's done really well on the course. And this is really reminiscent like you said some kind of throwbacks because the reason sam is so well known is from pushing through 
an injury that he had on the course one time when he had hurt his leg like while running the course and still made it through. And we get to see that again. He had back surgery six weeks prior. He's 50 years old at this point, and he's And knee surgery, man. And knee surgery. And he just clawed his th- way through this course, like on nothing but heart. I love yeah. Sam. So th- this is the thing. Sometimes you don't need a video and everything. They just told us, and that's enough to see just what he's going through. First of all, I have to also add to what you were saying, Rich. Sam Sands also very much well known for finding somehow like the next generation of top ninja stars and just leading them. Like he seems to be like the apprentice or mentor of all these amazing young ninjas and like Daniel Gill, Thomas Stellings. Like I don't know the affiliation too much, but he always seems to be around those those ninjas and a bunch of other ones. I don't even name them all off. But yeah, really cool on that front. Now Sam Sand, this run was so amazing because he came right off of back surgery which is just absolutely terrified me because back surgeries are one of the most extreme things you can do you're taught you're messing with your spine at this point you don't want to mess with that and also knee surgery like these are the two injuries you do not want to mess with this guy should not be running this course he should be at home in bed like resting and making sure that his body heals but this guy is so so diehard on the show that he still went for it and he's going on a course that's very very heavy on both your knee and your back going into that sp- bouncing spider ridge like oh. how terrified were you because i was screaming don't do it i was like just jump in the water please don't do it don't hurt yourself i kept thinking that's why they were showing him is that he was going to come out of this injured I-, I kept thinking that was it he's going to land on the platform and they're going to have to rush out and take him off the course or something but no, but somehow he kept doing it. I don't, I don't know how. I mean, guys, dr- from a drop down onto that, that trampoline, words can't describe the pressure that puts on mo- not only your knee, but your lower back. Oh, my God. How did he get through that? Continue on. And why don't you go through this, like, this rail runner, man, because this was a whirlwind of emotions. What a crazy run for him. I, I didn't I thought he had there was no way he was getting through that rail runner and then watching him do it watching him push through I thought there's no way he's not like he's just not gonna give up till he does um he got twisted around on it though um, after he made the transition which I I was absolutely floored when he did when he did that um but as he was going up with the second bar it got twisted around on him and he couldn't and eventually fell but it was just like a very very cool one like you said who needs who needs preamble who needs a video we're watching him make this interesting we're watching him yeah. make the story yeah it, it, the story is you don't you know it's right there in front of you we can see it and the amount of determination and i know i bring apart a whole lot guys but this guy exudes it this guy was not going to give up no matter what and that rail runner like he already had so much worn on him with his back and his knees but that rail runner is all upper back right and he just kept gutting through and gutting through and you could just see the anguish on his face and that guy was not going to give up i mean it was truly truly amazing sam sand congratulations you win this week's athletically profound run of the night it's never it's never about who makes it to the to the buzzer it's about which run is the most engrossing, who gave the most heart, determination, and grit. This guy exuded it. Perfect stuff. Awesome choice, man. I totally agree with that. Uh, next up in the course, we had Van Johns, a bull rider slash gymnast, which I never really thought of being two things that went together overly well, but <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he somehow makes it work. Dude's like ripped. He ended up having a bad bounce off the trampoline, though, on the you're, you're not you're not talking about um the highlight of this guy's run it stands out the most man what's that you go ahead oh you're not gonna talk about those pierced nipples <laughs> the uh the nipple rings <laughs> i totally missed that <laughs> how can you miss it no way how have you not this guy has got two rings hooked onto his nipples man it was amazing. I am like, what is going on here? This guy took off his shirt, just showing him off. I mean, that 
props to this guy. This guy's got no shame with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, honestly, all I could look at at that point was was his nips. I couldn't even look at anything else. Totally missed it. I I wasn't looking there. I don't know. I have no idea why I missed it, but I totally did. Dude, it was uh, something to see. <laughs> was, and he's training with it, too. Like, I could not look at anything else. <laughs> You're going to have to describe the, the run to me because I was just I was just looking at one thing. Uh, he seemed really strong. I thought he was going to make it further through the course, to be honest. But he did end up uh, going out of the bouncing spider. He just couldn't hold on to the pads. He didn't get a good grip on to the... Well, I don't think he really tried to grab the the pendulums. And he just grabbed on the pads and just fell in the water pretty quickly. Um, I was a little surprised, actually. Because I, I guess it's really cool to see a bull rider. I guess that's why they featured him. Which it definitely is. It was just a little odd. Yeah, now I'm just thinking about like when he grabs onto those, onto the, the pads or whatever those hanging like punching bags. Like he could have easily ripped one of those things off, and <laughs> you're that just not gonna been, let that go, are you? Like it's just that kinda... would have been horrifying for everybody involved. I mean, now that's all that's on my mind, you know. And uh, moving I'm glad, on, I'm glad I'm glad we didn't have any uh, injuries, so to speak, on that one. <laughs> Yeah, the guy seemed fine. He seemed like he's pretty solid. We may see him back. He he actually seemed like a like he's really taking Ninja pretty seriously. So, yeah. I wonder what other ring piercings he's got. Actually, Moving on to Jerry Dorilio, we who was one of the fast forwards we had. Um, she looked amazing. I kind of wish they had featured her more. Um, she ended up going out in the transition of the Rail Runner. She was awesome, Ed. Yeah, we've seen her before. She's very. High up there in National Ninja League. Definitely a name we've seen before. Yeah, yeah, I like her. I don't know. I, I feel like there's some low-key ninjas that are slowly, like, you're going to hear their name more and more. And at, at a certain point, they're going to have just a breakout performance be like, I've been, like, scouting this girl for a while. Like, they're so good. I think she's one of them. Kind of like an Adam Rail and um, Michael Torres. Like, one of those names that you keep hearing here over and over again. And they're just building up their namesake. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of time. Uh, next, I really didn't think we'd ever see this guy again, Michael Stanger, who oh, was man. one of my favorite runs we've ever had in past seasons. Actually was very prevalent in one of the first, it might have even been the very first episode of of our podcast. I remember talking about him very, very early on and thinking he was amazing. The, the whole story was like a perfect example of how the story, the story and the run can tie together so well and be so interesting and compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and but this one was just next level. So his wife, who I've been dying to to know what happened all this time, is now out of the wheelchair that she was in for four years. She switched up to natural treatments and physical therapy. She's been working out with him. Like that was amazing, absolutely fantastic. And on a season where. In many ways, if you think about it, like the things you remember and the thing that's been defining the season so far are a lot of like really tragic stories. I mean, this is a really uplifting, amazing story. I'm so happy to see not only that, like his wife looks absolutely fantastic. Good on her. She's completely changed her life around, but more so. And the thing that I'm just so happy about and they they reminded us, too. They called back to it. I mean, there was a certain point where she said. She dislocated every, almost every bone in her body, and I, I can't even, like, fathom what that's like. I mean, I, I literally can't even, like, imagine what not only, like, physically you have to go through, but psychologically what that does to a person. And to see that she had the courage to not only try things differently, but actually try physical therapy and do some really tough stuff. I mean, the stuff she's doing is not easy. No, knowing in the background that like how brittle and frail her body is and she's strengthening it i mean all the props in the world i mean whatever with michael stranger on many ways i was more so engrossed with his wife and really proud of what she's done behind the scenes i mean huge props to her and the entire family it was really at one point they even said like she she had to go to a hospice or something and like she might she didn't have much long to live, right? I mean, yeah, that was just the thing. What so, a crazy thing! So uh, the callback, and they did kind of mention it, but it really stuck with me because it seemed clear that she didn't have long to live when he re- took the course. 
a couple of years ago. Like she was really in really bad shape and he was out of, he was not in shape himself and he got in shape to be able to carry her up and down the stairs of their house and stuff. Like mm, that's he started right. Training yeah. in order to take care of her. Like it wasn't really about Ninja to begin with. It was just about being able to physically able to assist her. Um, great story. So happy to see that they've got it, you know, I don't know what happy ending, but a happy moment. Anyway, they're they're She's doing much better. Everything seems to be going really well from right now. And he did. He's working in a ninja gym now. He went on the transition of the rail runner, but he's looking really solid. I can't wait to see how he does this season. Yeah. Could you imagine if he wins American Ninja Warrior? Oh, my God. There's not. Could enough. you imagine that, like what a, a like national story? Like just you couldn't you can ask for like a bigger baby face in the world <laughs> yeah yeah for sure uh he's he's very compelling but he definitely has that like there's that innocent like every man look i don't know what you want to call it but yeah baby just face. L- literally the <laughs> nicest guy on the planet like just uh I, I i wish this guy nothing but the best in life and more so his wife i mean what two two amazing people honestly yeah, seeing her jumping up and like it, they even made a point of it a couple times, but seeing her jumping up and down on the sidelines, I was just just warm my heart. It's we've had like you said, we've had so many tragic stories this season. It was nice to have an uplifting one to to kind of end off the qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next on the course we had Lauren Ball. Man, oh man, this Lauren. Is, Lauren is like underappreciated sometimes because he's known you can for being say so that fast. Again. This guy's run every single like season. How many people even know that or realize that that Lauren Ball's run every single season? Not just that, like the guy is so fast, he beast modes the course every time, and I don't, I don't think people like he's known for being fast, but people don't realize not only that he's fast, but how talented he is. And yeah, just once again showing how why he's freaking Lauren Ball, dude. Yeah, he hasn't been to stage two in a few years. I think that's what's kind of killing him right now. So hopefully we get to see him make it there this year because uh, he was so solid. Like just made th- this incredibly difficult course look pretty easy, really, when you get down to it. He had no problems. He had a great yeah, and, time. And, and Lauren Ball is known for being <clears throat> lower body speed demon agility, you know, but he's not as well known for being an upper body dude. But on this course, it's it's got some epi bo- upper body like components that are pretty like legit, and this guy showed why he's dynamic and all around a competitor. So, I mean, he's silencing them haters one by one, man. Yep, he got the palm wonderful run of the night. So we get that a little earlier. Nice to get out of the way. I'm glad you thought you were. I, I was I was really happy for you in many ways when I saw that. Yeah, I could still read into it a lot, but I. Oh, I'm not going to harp on it because next on the course, we had Jake Murray, who we definitely need to talk about. Came in on a segue, dude. Not only a oh segue, but he was like looking at the camera, like just the best look on the face. I love this dude. This guy knows what's up. The video, though, it was interesting because last year, uh, I don't know if you agreed with me, Rich, but I remember I was like, that's really weird. The whole corn dog thing. It didn't really work for me. But apparently, it was huge to a bunch of kids online, so props to them. He he definitely made it, even though it was weird and I was like, whatever about it, it was a memorable moment. I guess it was so weird that people were like, you know, you remember the, the eye goggles and, and the jump in, the cannonball into the water and the corn dog. And it's pretty cool that he's got a defining moment for himself that a lot of people call back to. Yeah, definitely. And when we had him on the show, he explained about the the fanny pack and where it came from and everything so that was cool Mm -hmm. to get the backstory for that um super nice guy couldn't ask for a nicer guy to to get that love on the show guys y'all don't know like behind the scenes this guy is so freaking nice and humble it's ridiculous i'm like do you have a mean bone in your body (laughs) is it possible (laughs) it's like (laughs) he's just so chill but anyways go ahead rich that's right I, i i have to zoom ahead to the the sad ending here because he went out in the bouncing spider when he was sprinting through that was that was a kick in the the stomach <laughs> um, this was hard because you could see him going really fast and there's always that component when somebody's going super fast where it's like oh gosh are we getting a, a flashback of i think it was flip rodriguez right when he fell trying to race drew dreschel that one season he was out early and 
it, it I don't think it was that with, with this run, but it was still really hard to see him fall that early and more so because of where he fell and and the way this this episode was staged. You knew his entire season was over. And it was just so rough. I mean, they were hyping up. This guy's so good, so talented. He made it to stage two last year. He made it, he was representing Team USA on USA versus the world. Like, Jake Murray is one of the top ninjas in the entire world. And to see his season end that early was so rough. But I must say, it was the post interview that really hit hard for me and just made like my heart break, dude. The look in his eyes, right? Like you could see it bothered him. Well, you could just see like, you know, it wasn't just looking in his eyes, like you could see him tearing up. Like this yeah. you can tell that it meant a lot to him. This isn't there there are some competitors where it's like, ah oh, shucks, I didn't make it, but you know, there's next year. And then there's some competitors where it's like, How how did this happen? I've been training all year. This is like, you know, this is a part of their lives. And, uh, you know, I think for a lot of the competitors, they're okay with making it to Vegas and failing. Or I'm, I'm sure they're not okay, but, you know, right. they can be content with it. But to fail at the very first opportunity in the qualifiers of the city, I mean, that's where it's rough. And I think it was hard on everybody, but, you know you can empathize and really connect with him emotionally what was going on through his mind in that moment and he really showed his heart on his sleeve showing those emotions and in many ways it made me feel for him a whole lot more even more than the goofy stunts i mean that was a moment where i really connected with jake and uh, you know it just my heart broke for him it just sucks man well the thing is like We've seen it over and over again, right? It, it happens every season. We had J.J. Woods last year. We've had Lance Picas. We've had Flip Rodriguez, Drew Dreschel. Like, all of the top ninjas have had those moments, or not all of them, but a lot of them. And the only thing I can offer up as hope at this point is that they featured it heavily, and there is nothing that A&W loves more than redemption. Than redemption. Yeah. Right. He's going to get a crazy redemption story next year. Yeah. And that at least, at least there is that. Yeah, so it's just setting it up for next year. Jake will knock it out of the park. I honestly, before he started this run, I was kicking myself so hard. I'm like, why isn't he on my team? Why didn't I pick him? Oh, actually, I know why, because I thought he had injured his back earlier in the spring, but it was only a minor temporary thing. That was the only reason he wasn't on my team, because he is amazing. And we learned from when he was on the show with us that he's a rock climber. I always We always took him as a parkour guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's got that upper body grip, you know. Well, I already knew he had the upper body grip, but, like, he excels in it, I should yeah, say. Yeah, that's his specialty. And, yeah, so even more so, this guy is very much all around. I, I mean, a lot of competitors that we highlight are all rock climber, upper body base, but this guy's got a very strong dynamic also in lower body, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, and I love the one nice thing about when people fall like this is they give an opportunity to show kids because there's so many kids that watch this to to show that grace and to show that determination and to say like his quote to quote him it's only failure if i give up and that's the thing right yeah that was cool yeah especially because you know like kids really really look up to this guy like kids love jake murray so that's a really good message to say yeah so jake next year totally yours we will be rooting for you for sure very much so man uh, after that, we had some more fast forwards. One of them, another proposal. I think it's like the fourth one we've had this season. It's getting a little crazy. People really want to propose on this show, man. <laughs> yeah, it's become a thing. Um, so Rachel, Rachel Rodriguez's girlfriend, Candace, proposed to her. Congratulations to them both. Woo! 2017, love is love. <laughs> and next we had Ian. Oh, sorry. And they also fast forwarded Ian Dory. Who completed the course? I was certain. Oh, uh, you have no idea how happy I was because <laughs> Ian, everybody, Ian Dory has been so quiet, like leading up to this whole season, the whole episode. I'm like, is Ian Dory running? Is he injured? Like, what's going on? I have heard nothing about Ian Dory running. I was terrified he didn't even run this season. <laughs> this guy's on my fantasy league. He ran. I was so relieved. I was so happy. I even though he's kind of like overlooked in the first, you know. uh, episode or whatever 
I very much am high up on Ian Dory, guys. Don't sleep on this guy being fast forwarded. I could see him once again going deep into stage three. This guy, his his talents in the past few few years have been kind of understated. Uh, maybe because he was overshadowed by some other Wolfpack ninjas. Uh, but this guy, this guy's the real deal. Yeah, Ian is primed. He is. There is nobody more primed to win the whole thing than Ian. I think. Yeah. Uh, and then we came to the last run of the night. Megan Martin, who they may have hyped a little bit through the episode, as they tend to do. <laughs> so first of all, did you did you think she was completing the course? Because this is a, a moment where actually, I think because I actually took freaking note, because of you, of the Palm <laughs> Wonderful run of the night. I'm so glad I could spoil it for everyone else, too, yeah. Yeah, I was, like, I was pretty sh- certain she wasn't completing the course, because Megan Martin, you know, one of the top female ninjas... No female ninjas have completed this course. Actually, this course has like been really, really hard on everybody. I feel like if she completed the course, she'd be primed for the Palm Wonderful. So I had a feeling she wasn't going to make it. Yeah, the Oof. only good thing about having it earlier, though, was it still left some question, right? So she could have fallen early. Yeah. I didn't know if she was going to make it through because she has to make the top five, right? For top five for women. Mm-hmm. And I was hoping she would make it through the buzzer. But like you said, I was pretty sure she wasn't making it that far. But I wanted to make sure she made it at least to the rail runner. And that was the question. I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised. My whole world shattered when she made the transition. I'm like, oh, she might actually beat this thing. How did they not give her the palm if she beat this? Yeah, she was doing phenomenal. And actually had the same motions as you, Rich. I was like, what? Like, I was not expecting it. She was doing so well, man. It really broke my like. Were you just screaming when there was that one? I and the second in the second rail, right? There's a dip moment, and then that goes to an extended like elevation again. In that dip, we've seen other competitors lachey and just swing off of it. There, she was the one. It, her and Sam Sand were the two competitors. Where I was like, just swing now. Don't go for the upper part. Just go. Right. Just swing, please. Oh man. Were you just screaming at your television or what was going on? I was thinking, yeah, maybe you should make the early lache, but yeah, yeah. As soon as I saw her go sideways, I was like, yeah, it's it's done. She's going out there too. Yeah, that that particular obstacle, I I think because of the way the railing's set up and the way it's like spread out a whole lot more and it kind of hooks over, it's a whole lot harder to fix your posture if it leans over to one side, I've noticed. And I like that. So that meant we had only eight finishers, as we noted earlier. Uh, there were a couple of notable skips that they didn't mention at all. Uh, Carson Voiles, who did make the top 30. Uh, wow. I didn't realize they skipped him. Yeah, they didn't mention him at all. Hmm. Well, I'm glad he made it. Yeah. Uh, and one that didn't make it, who I definitely have to shout out, Dr. John Murray Adams, the Vision Ninja. Unfortunately, yeah. went out in the ring swing, uh, but he was there, and we definitely want to give him a shout out. He was featured in our 100th episode, has been on the show in the past seasons, and I'm sure we'll be back again next season. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Sucks his uh, season came to an end early, but I mean, he's one of those competitors that at least we're going to see him represented probably heavily in National Ninja League or the regional circuit, and I'm very confident we'll see him next year again. Yeah, and we had three women make the top 30 in this episode, which was pretty cool. Yes! We had, uh, just to clarify who that is, we had Megan Martin, Jerry Dorelio, and Tammy McClure. That was the winery lady. Mm-hmm. All talented. I mean, I'm glad they got they all got featured. I mean, they, they definitely showed their stuff. All right, so moving on to the National Ninja League. We're not going to go through it in the detail that we've gone over in the past. Um, they have changed up the formats of the video a little bit. Um, and they've broken out more youth divisions than in previous years. So they've got a bunch now, uh, different age groups. It's actually very definitely becoming like the training ground for future ninjas now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really psyched about that. National Ninja League is like expanding more and more, especially with the expansion of more and more ninja gyms uh, throughout the country. And yeah, I'm I'm really high up on the fact that they have more youth divisions and, you know, derivations. Because the show is very predominant with families, and a lot of these younger kids want to try the obstacles, and it'd be cool for them to have competitions like this. So I'm high up on that. Now, you you were hinting a little bit. How do you feel about the format, and and why don't you describe how the format is? Yeah, so instead of um, our typical... We we lost the theme tune, too. I don't know why that is, but Nora's old theme tune is gone. 
But besides that, I do kind of like that they do a rundown of the course before it starts. In the past, we didn't know exactly what the full course looked like. Now they have somebody demonstrate each of the obstacles, which is pretty cool. But rather than have like the the simple three, two, one of the female and male ninjas, we kind of get like a mixed bag of different runs and overviews of the course and everything. Um, some better video I found. I found the video quality stepped up, but the auto quality's dropped. I'm not sure exactly why, but yeah, overall it's good. It's just different. It's different. I very much appreciate as you said, the rundown of the course. I think uh, one thing a lot of people were talking about last season was we wanted to see more and more of what the course was like for everybody because that very much stages what everybody's going to go through and what and how you can understand the difficulty of the course. So I very much appreciate that. It was really cool and tight. I think they can do um, they can tighten up. I guess the the tenure or the focus, I should say of how the runs are presented because we do want to have a little bit of a breakdown of how people do and there, it's not like a complete like hot mess but it could be a little bit more focused as you alluded to but overall i'm i actually really enjoyed it and number one it, dude their production values have boosted up so much i'm really enjoying the production values of these new videos so really cool with that i don't know if it was the the people at the course themselves or what's going on but as you said the video quality and everything very much raised up really liking it yeah so they ran at the real life ninja academy and new york ninja so we had actually two different qualifiers that have gone so at new york ninja uh, we'll run through who actually did get the top three places for men and women. Uh, New York Ninja, we had Melia Oshner, I believe it is, in third. Rachel Goldstein, a familiar name from the show, in second. And Abigail Clark took first. And for the men, Tyler Barrel in third. Connor Galvin in second. And Mike Revert, or Rivera in first. Congrats, guys. Yeah, great job. The course looked pretty good. Both courses looked really tough overall. I don't have a whole lot to say about the individual obstacles and stuff. Nothing really stood out too, too much. Uh, but definitely the courses looked pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely check it out, guys. It's pretty cool. I, I really like seeing the creative new obstacles. And there were some. There was one called the Vertebrae that I kind of yeah. was like, ooh, that's that's pretty crazy looking. <laughs> so there's there's some cool stuff. Yeah, a lot of replicas of stuff we've seen from this season. It doesn't take them long. They start building the obstacles that you see on the show. So we're seeing like versions of like the battering ram and stuff. They called it something different, but you get the idea. And to run down the ninjas for the Real Life Ninja Academy in third, we had Rachel Goldstein yet again. So she's already taking a good start uh, at this. Uh, Abby Clark in second, who I'm going to assume is the same as Abigail Clark from the last one. So she's actually doing really well. And jesse lebrac in first place for real life ninja academy drew dreschel's gym looks really cool we get to see some familiar uh, male ninjas as well michael torres took third eli chevalier probably chevalier or something god knows in second and joe morovsky in first so yeah that was very cool too mm -hmm. joe was the only one that was able to complete the or no he didn't quite complete the course he came very close uh, yeah, for the he hit the else. vertebrae. Yeah. So yeah, two very solid ninja competitions. And speaking of ninja competitions, you got something to say about UNAA, right? I do. So the UNAA, for those that aren't familiar, because we haven't talked about it a whole lot, is the Ultimate Ninja Athlete Association, who has their finals coming up on July 21st and 22nd at Soar United in Dallas, Texas. So there's going to be over 180 athletes there. Uh, with some of the top athletes from A&W, including Jake Murray, who's going to be back to defend his championship title. Joe Morowski is going to be trying to take it away from him. They've got Daniel Gill, John Alexis Jr., Jesse Lebrecht, Mary Beth Wong, Lauren Ball, Maggie Thorne. Woo! The winner of the Wolfpack Ninja. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, Adam Rail. It's crazy. Like, there's just a ridiculous number of top name ninjas there. Um, there's going to be $35,000 in cash and prizes. Um, so they have spectator seating for over 1500 So there is like tons of room for you to go. They do have tickets for sale. We'll have a link in the description. Um, but notice, notice I said it's July 21st and 22nd. That's not going to give you a lot of time. But if you're in the area, you should definitely go check it out. They're at soarunited.com. 
They're also going to be live streaming. So if you can't make it, if you're not in the Dallas area, they'll be live streaming on their Facebook page. And the Saturday finals will be streamed on their website and their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Good. I was hoping that at least the finals would be streamed because that's very important. So, yeah, sounds like good times. And what a competition. I mean, those are some top tier names. And I'm really excited to see what kind of course they build for this competition. Yeah, it's very, very cool. It's what we want for Ninja to become eventually, right? It's like arena level competition for Ninja. Like you, if you are mm-hmm. there to support it, please do. Please go out and check it out. Yeah. All the props to everybody. I hope Jake Murray defends his championship again just because of the heartbreak I just saw tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm really rooting for that guy. Uh, so, yeah, that was it for UNAA. What do we got for the Spartan show? Come on, let, let's wrap this up oh, strong. No. Let's 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 end this <laughs> on a high note. Oh, yeah. Well, came to the wrong place for or seeing a high note on this one. So I only saw how the episode I just wanted to, you know, re reconnect with Spartan race because I heard a few people wanting to hear my thoughts about it of the, some of the changes that have been happening and also because the ninjas once again competed in the I think quarterfinals this episode to make it to the semifinals. Now, long story short, they just beat defeat like destroyed this course. I mean, the the other teams that they're competing against, they're they're mostly teams of people that aren't full on athletes. And it's just very apparent. I mean, it, it was a breeze to them. The The other teams were honestly just running for second place. It was kind of a joke in, in terms of that. They did switch up some of the obstacles. Like, they have this weird puzzle one now. Once again, it's kind of way too easy. Like, I, when I say these puzzles, it's kind of like these these giant boxes right there, super heavy. They gotta, like, got to connect together and put this giant beam in the middle of it, and they all interconnect. That sounds really cool, but in, but actually when you see it, they're kind of all just spread apart, and you just got to bring them together, <laughs> and it's not as difficult as it sounds. I wish they'd be like thrown all over the place, and you have to find the parts. That would have made it more interesting. Now, the main thing that I have to say about this, though, Rich, is guess what happened? The entire race and everything, that's the most compelling part of the show, right? Right. And I was actually getting engrossed for a bit. And then a vignette happens in the middle of the the run. <laughs> I'm shocked. And it wasn't it wasn't even a compelling vignette. It was just like some weird backstory of some dude. And I'm like, why? And then they did it again. And then they did it again. They did had three vignettes in the middle of this one race. There was a whole lot of screaming, a whole lot of cussing happening <laughs> in my living room. I don't know what they're doing. They're like sabotaging their own show. Like, who who are they trying to, like, do this for? Nobody wants to see some person's story in the middle of a race. I don't understand it. And it was just so appalling. I don't know, Bajan. I saw lots of comments last season. People were like, we need more vignettes. Like, why aren't there more yeah. vignettes in the middle of the race? This is what the fans want. We're demanding it. I'd love to find those those fans. I'll Spartan kick them. I'll, 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 you'll, see, you'll see something. <laughs> It was just atrocious. It was boring as all heck. It was dumb. None of it's really Spartan. I mean, the first episode, I was pretty excited because it was at that point, I was just like, well, it's Team Ninja Warrior Light. It's whatever. But seeing that they don't change things up, they don't really make it compelling. And they've actually taken a few steps back when it came to the vignettes when, um, later on in the season. It's just like, what are you doing? Like the at least they got the hose right. The hosts are still awesome, but and and the obstacles themselves are pretty fine, I guess to the to the main point. But at the end of the day, the editing is the entire show and the competitors, and they are failing wholeheartedly when it comes to the editing of the show. And I don't understand why they're just shooting themselves in the foot. All right, <laughs> but yeah, the ninjas made it on. So congrats! Like we're we're still gonna root for you guys and. I, I don't know the other teams, but, like, if it's anything like this episode, the ninjas are going to have, a, like, they're going to just literally sleepwalk their way to the to the championship. It's not even going to be, like, even a struggle. Yeah, that is a good point, because we don't wish any ill will for anyone competing on the show, especially the ninjas. We're definitely rooting for them. It's great that they're on oh, there, yeah. getting the exposure. And, uh, yeah, we have all the faith in the world in them. I'm sure they'll do great. No, they're going to win. <laughs> so far, so good. You should have seen it. Was, it was a joke. The other the other teams against these guys. All right. And a quick shout out to the listeners who have been sharing us out on social media. I just want to thank them really quickly. Cameron Aaron, Jacob Bowling, Courtney Venuti, 
and our favorite Twitter account, A&W Akbarism. Thank you all for doing your part in spreading the word, letting everyone know that we're here. Uh, and if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as at Ninja Podcast on both Instagram and Twitter. I am rich at ninjapodcast.com if you'd like to email me. And Bijan, how can they reach you? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B I J A N 151. Love hearing from you guys, everybody that you just shouted out, and, the mo- and more so. I love you all. All right. Thank you all for listening and have a great week. Peace and love, y'all. Comic-Con 2017, let's go!